Right, welcome. Thank you very, very much for coming this afternoon. Um, what I'd like to talk about is what we've been doing with final year software engineering students at the University of Portsmouth, and then they're going to speak for you. Uh, Jack, Lindsay, Gervia, Joe, and the other Jack, which is a story in itself. Actually, Jack's a story in himself, but anyway. So, first of all, so these are all students on a bachelor's software engineering course, and these are the core subjects that they take as part of that course. I've got the URL at the bottom there for the details of the course. This is a summary. I've grouped it into broadly related blocks of things. So hopefully what you see in those blocks is the kind of thing you would expect software engineering students to learn. I hope there aren't any glaring omissions in it. There's also a placement year. How many of you, you guys have done, and girls have done placement years? Just one. Okay. So I, don't, I think that's not representative of the, of the proportion. I think more do placements than not. So this is all the standard stuff that they do to prepare them to do, to learn how to do software engineering, like the, the tools of the trade, the underlying systems that we're working on, writing some applications, managing data, building websites, um, then going off and building some things for themselves in complex problem solving. A fair old bit of requirement stuff in, in complex problem solving itself. So, all very nice things to have, but what that lacks is something to pull all, hold all the bits together. So there are all those technical skills that they need, and they've learned how to learn those as well. What they haven't got is something overall, overarching, to help them become a, a good, professional, productive, communicative, useful software engineer and doing all the sort of sorts of things I was talking about yesterday morning. So the module I've been teaching them this semester is um, what was called scalable software engineering. And it had a lot of stuff in it about going away and building things. And I figured, actually, you know what? Learning how to go away and build a thing, they've done lots of. They know how to do that. If they've been on a placement, they've had almost of necessity some experience of learning how to do new things. So Jack, did you learn new things? Lo loads of new things, right? So they can do that. So me, me standing, there, standing there in front of them and saying, this is how you create a, a droplet on DigitalOcean or something pointless. They go away and learn that. Some of them will probably already know it anyway. So I took Scalable another way. And actually, the module title is changing. So they may be wondering why it's saying software engineering culture, because that's what's going to be next year. So I've taken the Scalable not in the just the raw technology sense, but in the we've got a grand sweeping history from the past through to where we are now, to how things are going to be in the future, and working with people, and working with people at different levels, considering your audience of users, considering fellow developers, considering wider implications about dependencies, open source software, all those sorts of things. So scalable in kind of every direction. I was going to say except the sort of architectural one, but in fact, a little bit of that as well, but not as a key thing, just as one of many aspects. So this is completely illegible. Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's got some pretty colors. That's all you need to worry about. So no, this is the overall, this is a new approach that we're following for some modules, a storyboard of the module. And it makes sense week by week. So it's sort of the week one on the left and week nine on the right. And instead of feeding them week by week material on the virtual learning environment, we give them this overall picture. And it's broken down in rows about what is the week about? What is the topic for that week? What do we expect you to be able to do after you've studied that week? And then there's a list of what's going to happen in the session. There's some pre-session work, some post-session work, what all this means for your assignment, how to check your understanding on it. So it's all there for all the weeks. You can see the bigger picture. So they can tell you themselves whether or not this was helpful. I mean, obviously, this diagram isn't helpful. So let's dive into it a bit. So first three weeks, um, rather more text than I'd normally have on a slide, but I'll leave it on there. So I just wanted to give you an overview of the kind of things. Where I've said we've done that broader, broader sweep of the material of being a software engineer. Um, a historical introduction, that's been really interesting, actually. That's, so we started, where did we start? About 1970, in fact. So, the, so this lot have seen the 1970 pipeline before, but were taking the roles themselves. And we had a real 1970 programmer come in as well, which I thought was quite cool. I don't know if they thought that was cool. <laughs> I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to ask. Right, so a historical introduction. And we were looking at things about, I don't know, leasing machines and virtual machines 
And lots of things that have popped up as a, you know what, that idea has come back round again. There's nothing new under the sun. So that's actually been quite interesting. And it's also important, I think, to understand where we've come from, to understand how much change there is. One of the exciting things about being a software engineer is the change, always having an opportunity to learn some new things, doing the same old thing day in, day out, just not be using our wonderful creative skills. So understanding some of that, the nature of the churn we've had, churn, no, just change, would, is, I think, worthwhile. And then we looked some at dependencies and open source software. Um, we had one of last year's placement students come in and talk about the Log4j incident, which turned out to be quite the dependency. And because he was working on the placement at the time in a security capacity, he had an awful lot of work to do in dealing with that. And also, he was, so he was working for, let's see, um, yeah, let's go large automobile manufacturer. And they were coming, there was messages from on high saying, have we, we've heard about Log4J, have we sorted it out yet? Sort of messages coming down, sort of wanting like every five minutes status reports. So, this, you know, this sort of situation where you can't get it done because management keep asking you if you've done yet. Been there? <laughs> okay. And so, week three, we looked at inclusivity um, within a team. There were the advantages of diversity, inclusivity within a team. We did an interesting exercise where we took a poll of who had ever in a tech environment felt different, not bullied or, or picked upon or anything explicit, but just felt any sense of not quite belonging. And we did that as a secret poll um, managed by lollipops. So it may have been skewed by people taking extra lollipops, who knows. But it worked out about 50-50 in that class, which was surprised even me, actually, that half of that class of, well, it probably wasn't 49 actually in there, because 49 don't always turn up. But nonetheless, about 50-50 about over a decent-sized sample of final, final year software engineering students had felt in some way excluded, whether it, or, or, you know, or just different and, and less welcome, even at the tiny, it will be only maybe at a tiny level. We didn't ask about scale. We kept it all very light in terms of not peering into people's personal um, experiences there. But yeah, 50% of them, more or less, I'm, to, down to the nearest lollipop. Right? <laughs> okay, so week four, we recognised that um, communicate, basically we looked at Yesterday's keynote, communication's fundamental. It's, um, you know, it's not just about the users, devs and people, not in the inclusivity sense, but in the, the things you do have an impact on other devs. Uh, week five, we looked a bit wider, not just at inclusivity within the team, but the social and ethical and accessibility, all the, all the, all the things we can do in the software that include or exclude people. So some really interesting um, discussions came out of that and some of today's talks came out of that. Return to the talks. Uh, we talked about hacking and rights and licenses. Was that the week I, that was the week I wasn't there? And the person who was there, was there, was that the week you did chat GPT? Yeah, so they did, yeah. So, so my colleague set them a discussion task about basically the pros and cons of chat GPT, is that right? Yeah, and then revealed at the end that the task was set by chat GPT. So I can't tell you, they can tell you more about that one than I can because I wasn't actually there. Right, cat herding, general sort of um, practices of software, software development, modern practices. Agile, what agile really means. They had, a, they had an all right guest speaker come down for that. Oh, you're not going to come back now I've said that. <laughs> I'll bribe you with lollipops and little plastic ducks. How's that? <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, they had their, their own sort of Kevlin Henry presentation. So, if you'd have seen that room over there, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, pack, packed rooms. So, yeah, very lucky bunnies. Right. Um, a bit about cloud comp computing. We also had... Um, someone come and visit for that and talk about his practical experiences of how um, his company deploys microservices, how they test that, um, had some interesting discussions around that. And finally, was that the one? Yeah. And then finally, looking at 
sort of delivery, um, continuous integration. So, yeah. oh, oh, this was, yes, this was this. Yeah, for this week, oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, so for this week, what we planned was to give them a, basically a bid to write, just listing all the tasks that they'd include. And we're going to look at remodeling the VLE, which is a nightmare, the virtual learning environment, which um, Gervis will tell you is horrible because Gervis is doing his final year project on how horrible the user interface is on that and the usability of it. Dreadful. So that was what we're going to give them. I said, okay, what would you do? All the things from figuring out the requirements right through to supporting it, maintaining it, you know, when it's out there live, which is a bit we kind of expected them to not think about, which would then give us all this to talk about. And then the day before, a new parking system was released by the university for, by which you have to subscribe, sign up to be able to use the university car parks. But you have to get... Basically, you get a permit to be allowed to use them at all. And then you go to another system to actually buy tickets. So you're only allowed to go to that second system when you buy tickets. And I'd had a spectacularly crap user experience signing up for that on the Thursday. Wish I, wished I hadn't on the Friday because we, checked, we said, forget the VLE. Let's let them go look at this. And oh boy, did they look at it. So yes, they found the usability issues. And then they found the security issues. They found the complete absence of any rate limiting on the signups. They found the, the terms and conditions that said, we can't guarantee your credit card will be safe. They found the use of jQuery. Um, they found some hard-coded, but trying to pretend they weren't hard-coded by having basically sort of defined them as variables and then used them uh, bits of text for the password um, weaknesses in there. And I think probably several others. And they, they were brilliant. It was fantastic. We had, a, we had a wild time. And in the end, we talked very, 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 very briefly about this stuff and kind of wished that the people doing the parking system had done a bit more of this stuff. So that's what we cover at the moment. And their assignment for this is in two parts. So they had to submit. We're, we're basically running a conference as a, as a course. Um, so they had to submit a speaker bio, three potential proposals to be chosen from by the, com the conference committee, and they had to do peer reviews on other students' work. And that's how we decide which one of the three proposals we're going to accept. So not everyone's guaranteed a proposal accepted, right? But it'll be one of those three. And then the second stage of that is to prepare the slides for it, give a handout of several pages to put a bit more meat to it, give us something to mark, and also drive home the fact that slides and handouts are, are very different things, and then present it either in person or on a video recording with, um, well, initially the plan was one, the one sort of who came out best of that coming here, and then we managed to figure out um, travel for, for others, and they're only short presentations, so we brought five of them here today. So, I'm not going to ask you right now, but what I would like to know is, are we on the right track with this module? Is what we're doing a good kind of thing? It seems it to me, but I'd love some industry feedback on it. Would you like to be recruiting people who've been through a course like this? Um, that's my email address for it. But now I would very much like to hand over to my lovely students to present their work. So they were each choose, they had to choose from they, from, from those nine topics, they could choose any three they wanted, three different ones. And the, the particular mix we've got here is just down to how the reviews came out. So I'd like to invite Jack. Oh, is it Barnard? I should have checked that beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> that, so I, I actually spec I have to spec specify which Jack because we have two and we've, I've messed up on that before now. So over to you, Jack. <laughs> 